Okay, um, welcome to a rather special TS81 uh, review. Um, as you can see in front of front of you in this screenshot, we have um, a uh, book by Pat Hammond, the uh, tri the story of Rovex, Volume One, which was uh, highly recommended by uh, John on the. Uh, YouTube channel uh, Chums123 I think it's called uh, massive shout out to you there John and thank you very much for recommending this book it's been it's been a lot of help and uh, it's opened my eyes to uh, good ideas and things that I didn't know about and um, it's made me put this video together um, the story goes um, my uh, granddad originally purchased some uh, locos back in the 50s from the Trying range and then the, those locos are then passed down to my uh, father and my uncle when they were young and they both had a, a loco each and now well actually to tell the story true, truthfully then they got passed on to my other uncle, my dad's younger brother and then they got passed to me so I I now own those uh, locos and my dad is uh, highly impressed with the fact that I've actually got the uh, one of the locos in question working properly as I will explain in due course but first of all let's open up the book I've marked out the page so we open up on this page. Okay. I'll probably move the book I've, and uh, zoom the camera in so you can see one of the locos in question, which is one of the first I assume by reading uh, R59, a 262 uh, standard tank locomotive. And it says here, number one, uh, 1956 and a 1959 version. So I take it that's 56 and that's 59. I take it that's 1961 and I take that's 1964. That's the way I see it anyway. But the loco that I have is this one, the 1956 version, which can only run on uh, Super 4 track or Series 3. The, this the flanges on, on this locomotive are quite thick, you see. So on modern day track, it can run on it, but it'll you'll be hearing it uh, hitting the chairs. So I'll probably have to do a separate running video for this one, and I'll set it up on, well, Series 3 track, which is the track that came with the locomotive that my dad had. Also, if I move the camera down, okay. and you can see, uh, uh, bigger view of it and a like a black and white steel shot of the locomotive in question. It's a rather nice locomotive if I would say so. Anyway let's uh, move on to the next one. So this is the first one. This was owned by my uncle. This is his one and then my dad's one because they all were originally my grandfather's but then then they pass them to my to his two sons. So Okay and uh, this is the second loco. This was my dad's or originally, like I said again, originally my granddad's with both of them. But this is the one that my dad had, which was uh, the Britannia. And this is a rather special locomotive because it does something rather special, which you will find out in due course. Um, what I can say is, um, yep, I uh, fully service her and she runs like a dream. Both of them run really well. So I'm um, highly impressed with it. So you will see this locomotive running um, after a review. So um, let's uh, let's get to the review, and I'll see you shortly. Hello, and welcome back to uh, another TS81 uh, video. This is uh, well, it's a review, but it's a sort of a review. Um, and plus, this is a remake as the first one I did I wasn't that happy with it and um, it sounded as if I had a cold so I, I did look at this loco which I'll talk about in a minute I did look at this loco after I redecorated my uh, my house so I think I was just feeling a little bit run down and it sounded as if I had a cold but it wasn't really a cold it's weird but I just 
really wasn't happy with the video. But there we go, there's me wrapping it on as usual. This loco is, well, it used to be originally my granddad's, and then it got passed to my dad, and then it got passed to my uncle, and then it got passed to me. So this, this locomotive's been in my family for a while, so it means a lot to me, this loco. It's a very valuable uh, loco to myself. And you ignore what's on the box, it's just me writing when I serviced and I, I did some uh, work on it because I, uh, well, I, I replaced something on it but I'll tell you about that in a bit. Let's get the box open. Now I've just put this in a, like a storage box and inside we get the more usual box that the locomotive comes in. A tail shot. This well, it's not really the original box to this locomotive because I've used this from another one. But what I'm, this, oh, I couldn't get the words out today. Um, this one is R259 and it should say S on the end because this is a locomotive with smoke. Okay, that's why this isn't the original box, but the original one would have an S on the end because. This this model has a, a smoke unit fitted, which is really nice. You'll see more of that on the running video. That's exactly what I uh, fitted when I last serviced it, because the original smoke unit in it w was broken and it no longer worked, so I replaced it. So anyway, it's going a bit retro today, aren't we? <laughs> so look, for people old enough to remember trying railways. This is round about, I think is I think this model's 1962, something like that. I can't, I do have the information somewhere when this one was made. This is the earlier one anyway, because this model's um, suited for Super 4 track, which has um, a thicker rail. Anyway, let me chat in again. Let's take the box lid off and we'll open up and we'll get straight to it. Right, this is how it's the best way for me to I think I'd turn on the side. There we go. I have uh, wrapped it in the tissue paper for extra uh, protection. As like I said, this, this loco does mean quite a lot to me. And also, this loco is responsible for getting me into model railways. It really is. It's this locomotive that my dad set up on the floor in my bedroom when I was about four years old. And he set it all up and had them running around. This, this uh, locomotive came with uh, some Pullman cars, which I still have. So yeah, it is really, I really enjoyed it. This really is the locomotive that got me into uh, model railways. This is not my first locomotive. This is my, like I said, this was my originally my granddad's, and then passed on my dad, and then my uncle, and then now me. I mean, let's have a look at it. Let's have a closer look. I mean, that, ignore the guy in there. That he's a trackside uh, worker, and I, when I was, I think I was about sixteen, I decided to wedge him in the window, and he's been there ever since. He has popped out uh, recently because when I uh, serviced the leg, I gave her a clean, and I put put him back in. So yeah, it's really. Obviously, you're not going to expect much because this is from the early days. This, this is trying. The valve gear is, is just well. How can I put it? It's a representation of a valve gear. This is not the correct valve gear, but it, it did the job for the day. It did the job. Now you're not going to expect any sprung buffers or anything fancy like that. But what you do expect on this is inside that funnel is a smoke unit. Which you will see when I put her on the tracks running. 
because like I said I already have uh, I already have previously reviewed this loco and I wasn't happy with the with the review so I'm redoing it and there's plastic wheels on the bogies I'm afraid they're the they've got quite thick flanges on them because they're like I said the design for the Super 4 track but the flanges on on the driving wheels are not that thick so hmm, swing some roundabouts here but they're plastic and they're metal and obviously wheel arrangement she's a four six drive main driving wheels and two at the rear so she's a Pacific locomotive which is quite nice and obviously her name is Britannia I didn't even mention that on the box apologies for that it is, it, she is quite nice they're metal buffers but not sprung and smoke plastic smoke deflectors and I that is a, a nameplate added but I don't know if it is I think it's tin I think that the nameplate is made out of tin I'm, sh I'm sure of it and then just etched the names just uh, printed on the tin not etched I mean and we got brass uh, safety valves there's a whistle on this side <clears throat> She's very basic, but like I said, I, I couldn't, I couldn't uh, not do a review of this loco. Well, a look at, I call it a look at, and she just means so much to me. I mean, albeit being basic, but she does mean a lot to me. I don't think the camera's picking out the inside of the cab. I mean, it, there is. It's just moulded inside, I'm afraid. And there's the loco, we've got the tender as well to look at, so if I place her down. Okay, I'm looking at the tender now, and like I said, it's very basic detail. And also, this isn't the original coal, I put that in there, and I know that a lot of you can spot my errors, I mistakenly uh, put the coal in there and I mistakenly used uh, poly cement instead of diluted PVA glue which you can see is a line along the ridge there which this is the reasons why not to use poly cement on, uh, on um, detailed parts of your models because it will just melt it, that's what it's designed to do big huge large tension lock on the back can be removed you just unscrew it there but you, you won't be able to pull anything <laughs> and we got the uh, British Railways uh, late crest on the side and the representation of the lining going around the tender and you've got some rivet detail there which is good good for the time we've got a little ladder at the back some more little rivet detail. Well, you cut these all moulded there, like there will be handrails there, and they're moulded, I'm afraid. And water filler. Yeah, and uh, the thicker wheels. Like I said, these are the plastic wheels and their flanges. I don't know if I can. The camera can make out. They're quite quite a thick flange but I want to keep this model original I don't really want to replace them very basic molded detail a little scoop for the fireman there and then the hook where it just hooks on this is a simple hook so no electrical transmission or whatsoever in the tender it's all plastic and it's just a pin and hook and that's it and uh, jobs are good and off you go but still, this is a prized possession in, in my fleet. So, anyway, let's put this down. And I think we'll have a closer okay, look. Like I said, in the, um, these new style reviews, I've kind of gone with a white screen so I can uh, pick out some, some of the detail that you can't usually see. So, I, 
I find this a better way of showing locomotives anyway. Um, I did uh, trial this with the uh, Hornby Club Loco and uh, I'm always uh, welcome your feedback on it and see how it looked for you guys out there watching this video. So yes, I always encourage your feedback on it to see what you think and whether you reckon this is a way forward or not so I can uh, show you my locos closer up so without handling them. Some of them are really awkward to handle because there's really delicate fitted details on the modern day style locomotives. But also I didn't mention on the re-recording of this uh, locomotive, Britannia, which is my granddad's, I do own how many I think four Britannias, four locomotives that are named Britannia and there is a reason for that. This obviously I didn't have this originally, this was my uh, granddad's then passed to my dad and then uh, passed to my uncle and uh, this the story goes that this one got put in for repair and whilst it was in repair my uncle left it in there and it got left in there for a while well my dad and myself went to the model shop which was originally uh if people can remember some of you might remember harrow it's a, it's a shop in harrow called puffers okay it's near the uh near the train station a shop called puffers and that's where um this locomotive went for repair and during that time I went to that shop to purchase my Britannia, which you'll see on a later video, which was in, I think it was 90, 95? Yeah, I think it's about 95 around there. And this one was in the shop and uh, the, the guy behind the counter recognized my dad's surname. And uh, so he asked about this locomotive and my dad said, yeah, well, I collect it as well. We, otherwise it will probably get moved on and sold on to another person which my dad wasn't going to let happen so my dad paid for the repairs done to it and then we took them away so I'm I'm lucky to have this locomotive, really am lucky anyway I'm chatting on again All right, as I didn't uh, point out if I zoom the camera on zoom the camera in a little bit zoom the camera on <laughs> we go slowly. I'm still getting used to the camcorder by the way. And there we go. We'll go about there. Um, you can see a nice fine turn brass whistle which is fitted there. And also alongside the boiler you get a um, handrail but it's moulded and it was it needs repainting really. It needs it originally was white but like I said, that's moulded, so, you know, this is uh, like, again, early days, but still, it still looks good. And you can see the smoke deflector a bit more better now as well. I'm going to move the camera around, you see the uh, huge tension lock on there, which, yeah, you can remove the front coupling, but I've just left it there. And the plastic wheels. And there you got the um the valve gear there and the pistons. I had to refurb those pistons because there's originally one of the problems with it, and that's the reason why I got the other Britannia locomotive, which you'll see a review of as well, another one. And you go to the cab. Oh yeah, and also uh, like again I've rabbited on again. Um the, there is a brand new Britannia which I've got, which will be. We'll finish the series on Britannia, on the Britannia locomotive anyway. But it's my again, it's another one of my prized possession. If you not, if you don't follow me on Twitter, um, I did mention that um, this locomotive Britannia is my favourite loco favourite steam locomotive. So. Here we have a look. So you will see uh, a review on uh, 
that one coming up shortly. But again, it's a very basic detail, but still, it's all there. Anyway, you want to have a look at the, um, let's have a look at the smoke box. Okay, we're at the smoke box. Um, I'm afraid the uh, smoke box star, that, that is moulded, but it's, it looks like it's been worn away. And the only reason why I can think of why it's like that is because of the screw there that separates the chassis from the body. It's right in front of that, and I reckon a screwdriver or something is something like this, or well, this is not really a screwdriver, but has um, marked and worn away the uh, smoke box dart, which I'm afraid that's why it is like it is. But still, like I said, this is a prized possession. There's the uh, buffer beam there. Still, again, looks a little bit worn, but. Bearing in mind this is quite an old locomotive and it has had an extremely lot of use, not just by myself as well. And I've had this since I was, what, I'd say, I think about when I was 14, I'm sure it was about there. Anyway, let's have a look at the cab. Okay, um, I had to fiddle around there, but um, I managed to get a view of the cab. And as you can see, it is, <laughs> it is very basic, but still the, there is a representation of uh, all the uh, instruments there. It's very basic. You could if you wanted to um, paint them and uh, depict them out, but you can see the uh, little matey there. <laughs> Also, you can see the uh, smoke box, the, not smoke box, the firebox uh, doors there. Uh, you can see them there. That'd be nice if they actually had a little light that glue. Um, there is no uh, glazing in this model. As you can see, there's um, a representation of the windows, but it's not glazed. Um, yeah. Like I said, I'm still getting used to. Uh, camera positions but I think that's uh, shown up the uh, cab very well actually it looks it looks quite neat you know I can show you the details and there you are you'd be able to see them so let's have another let's have a look at um, the side of the locomotive okay we're at the uh, smoke box side so we're looking at the uh, the uh, deflectors there smoke deflectors which are plastic they're separate fittings, but they are plastic, and like I said, the uh, Britannia name, that's separately fitted, but I think it's printed on tin, I think it was tin or something like that, and it's printed on there. It's, it's a nice representation anyway, and as you can see, they're supposed to be um, like a, an orange lining, which has uh, faded away again, and um, I could, I have... Well, I can, I can re redo that if I wanted to, but I'm not too sure if I want to or not. Okay, I'm going to move the camera a bit. I'll move it along. Okay, we're at the side of the locomotive now. You can see there's instruments there that are moulded, and again, we got a, uh, a handrail that goes along. The um, it looks this one, this side looks more whiter. And it's got still got the colour to it, but like I said, it's moulded. Oh, the camera's going a bit... there we go. And um, this part here, now that's plastic I'm afraid. But like I said, it's the early days, so there's an early representation of the valve gear. Which does work fine. I really can't wait to get this one running, because you really will like this one. Let's move the camera along. And also, if we look at the cab itself on the sides there is some lining is a bit scratched up and the numbers missing but um, I do have some transfers I can repair that if I if I needed to but like I said you know, I might not I might just leave it and see a couple to a tender there okay what I'm going to do is refer you back to the uh, track side and you can see this fine uh, locomotive Britannia that used to belong to my 
was originally my granddad's and my dad's run on the track and watch her steam away. <laughs> Thank you for watching.